Now let's go over uh, how a build PL looks like. As I mentioned, there can be build PL or makefile PL, depending what uh, route you take. But let's see what what uh, happens if you take uh, use uh, build PL. So what the, the assumption is that you're using module build, and uh, probably it's because you would like to write everything in Pro. You don't want to care about the make uh, the syntax of make files. Probably you don't have any. C dependency here or C code here, all, it, all your code is just Perl, which is most of the cases. So how it looks like. You have you create the build PL just within the root of the uh, module, the directory of the package you're creating. Just use strict use warnings, just standard things, use module build, you're loading the module build module. And then here you, you start by declaring the version number of the Perl you require. That's a good uh, thing to do here uh, quite early. So when pr someone is trying to install this module um, on an old version of Perl that you don't support, then it will break. Uh, it will complain right at the beginning, and it won't go further uh, trying to do things that it can't do on that old version of Perl. So here that you, we just said that uh, we are using 5.8. That's basically f what we call 5.8, and uh, we don't care if it's one or two or within the 5.8. And then what you can, what you need to do is. Uh, Code the constructor of module build, assign it to a variable, and then later on call create build script, and that will create uh, uh, the build build file. So in, from build pl it will create a build file. And within this there, there's the description of what uh, uh, is required for this module to be installed, and there are a couple of things that are important. Uh, some other, par other parts are not that important. So we start by the name of the module. This is the, the name of your, your application. It's a app in this case, or it's a module dash name or, or whatever you, your name, the name of the module. Then the license. The license is, is a key that um, somewhere there has, there's a list of, of these keys. If you're, most of, most of the people are using the Perl license, which is the, the GPL or artistic. If you are writing some proprietary, then I think you just write here proprietary, and um, that's uh, the license. This is used when uh, generating the meta files, the meta YAML and the meta JSON file. So this is what embedded there. That's uh, and that's a it's a good thing to do. So to declare what the the license of your of your package. Then the distribution author, which is usually a name and an email address. This abstract, which is um, just um, a one-liner of what does the, the module do, it's I think not, not required. Then, because this is this is um, a build PL, and many old systems uh, didn't do didn't deal with build PL, so there is a way to to deal with it. So, what happens if your system is expecting only a makefile PL? And then you would pr probably want to create a makefile PL that somehow works uh, the same way without you writing it. So you don't, you don't want to create it manually. And then you can uh, decide it with this create makefile PL uh, parameter. In this case, I set it to zero, which means it won't create a makefile PL. You could also s set it to the traditional uh, um, word. And then it will create a makefile PL that is just a regular makefile PL, but um, you don't have to, to th know how it works. So systems that uh, can deal with build, build PL will use the build PL, others will be able to use the makefile PL. I personally prefer, if, if I already use build PL, then I pr prefer to set it to zero. Then in assuming uh, you have some scripts that you would like to install, then you put the script files and then you uh, provide the name of the script file here. I think it can get an array, I'm not sure in that. Uh, create readme. The, so the readme file, some people like to maintain a, se a separate small readme file. Other people prefer to take the pod from the documentation of your module and uh, format it as a simple text file and put that as the readme. So that would be create readme one. If you generate readme file from the pod, I put it zero because I create my own readme, readme file manually. Then this is the interesting part, the requires. 
the requires field is a uh, the value of it is a hash key value pairs the keys are the names of the modules that you require for your runtime so your module when it's running it needs these two modules and on the right hand side the values of these keys are the minimum minimum version numbers it's not not exact it's the minimum version number and as a string here and usually if this is a usually we list here every module including those that are standard that we are assuming that they are standard one day they might have might be removed from the core pro and then you just want to make sure that they are installed when your code is being used uh, or maybe that's just uh, the distribution that you're using decided that the uh, file based name let's say is not necessary for the basic running of Perl. so you list here all the modules including the standard ones the standard ones are usually set to zero uh, as the minimum re required version number though that's ne not necessarily uh, you can also look up uh, the specific version number that say th uh, this uh, module this version of Perl uh, included or so it's usually not a good idea to put here a no version number that's higher than the minimum required uh, version number of this module because that can cause CPAN to try to in upgrade your your Perl which is not a good idea you don't want that and uh, in other cases you just put in the basic version number the minimum version number and then but there are also modules that uh, tools modules basically that you might need for the time when you're building this this distribution so when you're installing it basically for example all the test modules you don't them you, you don't need them usually at runtime right uh, unless your module itself is a test module but if it's just a, a regular module then you don't need the test modules for the runtime but you need it during the installation so that the build requires is just the same hash with a, a list of pairs of module names and minimum version numbers that you will need for for installing the module and that's important for so that these modules don't need to be installed on the target system but need to be uh, downloaded and and somewhere put somewhere for the, the building it's very important for example for Linux distributions that they when they want to set the dependencies then they know that they will need to put this on the build machine but they don't need to put this as a dependency of your your module if it's uh, being packaged 